So this um, this lesson is on who is Jesus, uh, and uh, I'm going to hand something out to you that I handed out to you before. Uh, I know we talked about this last year, uh, but in part uh, because this is my favorite part of my favorite book, but mostly because this is an important uh, this is important and germane to this lesson. Uh, I want to go over this uh, this again with you. So this is a, a quote from uh, C.S. Lewis from New Christianity. Uh, this is my favorite part of New Christianity, and New Christianity is my favorite book. Although the cost of discipleship by Dr. Bonhoeffer is like a new um, So I'm going to read this aloud to you. I've done that before. I know that. That this is not part of me becoming old and forgetting stuff. Um, and then I'm going to draw something on the board. I've drawn it on the board for you before. Uh, but again, uh, I think it's important. So uh, we'll do it again. You know, you, when you were learning your time tables, you did them over and over and over again. Nobody ever said, well, we've been through this already, right? So uh, this is important, much more important than time tables. So here's what uh, C.S. Lewis writes. Then comes the real shock. Among these Jews, there suddenly turns up a man who goes about talking as if he was God. He claims to forgive sins. He says he has always existed. He says he is coming to judge the world at the end of time. Now, let us get this clear. Among the pantheists, like the Indians, meaning the Indians in India, anyone, like Hindus, uh, anyone might say that he was part of a part of God or one with God. There would be nothing very odd about that. But this man, since he was a Jew, could not mean that kind of God. God, in their language, meant the being outside of the world who made it and was infinitely different from anything else. And when you have grasped that, you will see that what this man said was quite simply the most shocking thing that has ever been uttered by human lips. One part of the claim tends to slip past us unnoticed because we have heard it so often that we no longer see what it amounts to. I mean the claim to forgive sins. Any sin. Now, unless the speaker is God, this is really so preposterous as to be common. We can all understand how a man forgives offenses against himself. You tread on my toe, and I forgive you. You steal my money, and I forgive you. But what should we make of a man himself unrobbed and untrodden on, who announced that he forgave you for treading on another man, men's shoe, toes and stealing another, uh, other men's money? Asinine fatuity is the kindest description we can give to such his, to his, uh, of his conduct. Yet this is what Jesus did. He told people that their sins were forgiven and never waited to consult all the other people whom their sins had undoubtedly injured. He unhesitatingly behaved as if he were the, was the chief party, the party chiefly concerned, the person chiefly offended in all offenses. This makes sense only if he really was the God whose laws are broken and whose love is wounded in every sin. In the mouth of any speaker who is not God, these words would imply what I can only regard as a silliness and conceit unrivaled by any other character in history. Yet, and this is the strange significant thing, even his enemies, when they re read the Gospels, do not usually get the impression of silliness and conceit. Still less do unprejudiced read. Christ says that he is humble and meek, and we believe him, not noticing that if he were merely a man, humility and meekness are the very last characteristics we would attribute to some of his sayings. I am trying here to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who is merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would be either a lunatic on a, on a level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the de devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and, and kill him as a demon. Or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. So what I've written on the board for you before, and I'm writing on the board again, and I would suggest that you write it down, 
because I think it will be helpful for you. So Jesus made a number of claims about himself. He claimed to be God, is one thing it says here. He claimed uh, to be the Son of God. He claimed to be the Savior of the world, right? So all of those um, are either true or they're false, right? There's no other choice. Either those claims that he made about himself are true or they are not true. If they are false and he knows they are false, So he, he knows his claims are false. What is he? He's a liar. He's a liar. Do we generally call liars good people and, and, and worship liars? No, of course we don't. Now, it could be false, but he thinks those things are true. So what would you say about a person who says, uh, before Abraham was, I am, essentially saying, I am God, who is not God. It's not true. What do we call those people? Crazy. crazy. We call them crazy. That's where the lunatic part comes in, right? So if what Jesus said was not true, he either knew they were not true and he is lying, or he thought they were true and he's crazy. If I begin to say to you, I had a dream last night and God told me, I am the savior of the world. I'll know me all the time. I think most of you love me. But you're going to Mr. Hood and saying, you got a problem. Uh, because I would either be lying or I'd be crazy. Uh, and either way, neither is a real good look for a Bible teacher, right? So, uh, so uh, you'd be you'd be telling people, "Who stay away from the crazy woman," right? But what if it's true? If it's true, he was and is the Lord of the universe, just as he said. And that's why C.S. Lewis says that you can spit on him as a fool, you can laugh at him as a lunatic, but you can't come, or you can fall at his feet and worship him, but you can't come with the patronizing nonsense of Jesus was a good moral teacher. Jesus, you know, had had good things to say, and we should follow the, the teachings of Jesus, but he's not the Messiah. That's patronizing nonsense. Because these are your only choices. This is it. These are your only choices. Either it's true or it's false. And if it's false, either he knew it or he didn't. He's either a liar or a lunatic. But if it's true, Lord, and that demands a response. Once we know who Jesus is, it's kind of like in math class. Once the teacher has explained it to you, you are now responsible for that information, right? And if you don't understand that information, then you need to go get, get your questions answered. And you're going to do that because a test is coming and you want to do well on it. So you need to, you are responsible for that information. Once you know this, you're responsible for that information, and it demands a response on our part. Because he's the Lord of the universe. So this lesson is about um, who is Jesus. And part of the lesson is going to include a discussion on uh, the Trinity. And, and again, we've been through the Trinity before, and so I will dive a little bit deeper into it uh, in this lesson. Uh, but uh, if you would please uh, turn in your books to the lesson, lesson six, uh, and uh, I'm going to go through a few things here 
and then we'll start the um, the video that we're going to watch. So the first part in my book, I don't think it's in yours, but it tells the lesson purpose. And I want to go through this with you because I want you to understand it's really easy when you go to a Christian school to just have all of it kind of just be noise and you don't really hear it. Uh, because you yeah, I didn't gone through this before, I get it. And you kind of become inoculated to it. And to me, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to my students. They become inoculated to the, to the truth of the gospel. So I'm going to go through this lesson purpose so that you can see what our end goal is. Um, and then um, we'll just start talking about a couple of things and then, then we'll start the, the movie. The, the anchor for this week is Jesus is God. That's the anchor for the week. In, in Mark 8.27, Jesus asked his disciples this question. Who do people say that I am? And they said, some say you're a prophet, some say you're Elijah. And then he says to his disciples, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter, being Peter, said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He was the first one to do that. Similarly today, pretty much everywhere, particularly in the United States, but really around the world, everybody has an opinion about Jesus. Who he is. We're still asking this question today. Who do people say that I am? It's an important question to ask. Who do you say that Jesus is? Probably the most important question we can ask is the question that Pilate asked. When uh, when he, he decided that Jesus was innocent and he tried to get him out of the trouble he was in. And so he said, what about I release Barabbas? Or what about I release Jesus to you? Because he released the governor would release a, a first grand castle. And they said, no, no, we want Barabbas. Release Barabbas. And then Pilate asked the most important question. What am I to do then? Jesus. Would that we would all sincerely ask that question of ourselves. What am I to do with Jesus who is so questions, the question of who Jesus is is still being asked today. If you ask a Mormon, um, they, they would say that he is the half-brother, literally the half-brother of Lucifer, of Satan. Others believe he's a prophet. A Muslim would tell you he's one of many imperfect prophets. And, and uh, Muhammad was the final prophet. If you ask somebody who's maybe an atheist or... Uh, or a non-religious person might say he was a good person or a good teacher or a, a, a philosopher, a moral teacher or philosopher. Um, some would even say he was the greatest human being to ever walk the earth. I have a cousin who um, is uh, a pastor in the Unity Church, and he calls Jesus a way shower, one of many way showers, a person who shows us the way we should go. He doesn't say he is the way. Jesus called himself that. But that he is a way shown. So the question before us is, is Jesus God? You know how we've talked about stuff in this class over the course of the last four years? And I say something like, this isn't a hill to die on. You can disagree about baptism and, and still both be Christian. Somebody who believes in, in infant baptism and so, or somebody who believes in uh, believer baptism. And, and you can disagree on that and you can debate that. No problem. If you're both believers in Christ, it's not a healthy life. Or speaking in tongues or liturgy or whatever it is, you're all still believers in Christ. Thought of the guy. This, this is the thing. If we make Jesus anything other than this, we no longer have Christianity. His name is if the word, right? Christ Jesus. We no longer have Christianity. So the Christian worldview, to in order for us to have a thoroughly Christian worldview, we have to believe this. We have to believe in Christ. We have to believe that Christ is who he said. He is. Remember, God gets to, to define who he is. He's God. 
He gets to define who he is. He is God incarnate. Um, and, and his willingness to come to earth and to allow himself to be abused and sacrificed for the sins of humanity should, as I said, elicit a, a response from him. And that's what I'm hoping for. Is that, uh, is that if you're far from Christ, you would come closer to Christ. If you're close with Christ, you would come closer. Um, so uh, we're going to... Um, I'm going to start the uh, the video now, and we'll watch what we can of it. Uh, and um, if you're at home, this is where you can queue up the video online.